here uh, in the background is the Abraham Avinu Synagogue. Here in the background, the Abraham Avinu Synagogue is something very significant. The uh, Abraham Avinu Synagogue is being rebuilt after 400 years. In the 50s, King Hussein raised it to the ground together with the whole uh, Jewish quarter and uh, there was nothing left. And on the side of the Abraham Avinu synagogue, he placed a public toilet and a goat pen. After the Six Day War, when we returned to Hebron, we uh, started making uh, movements towards uh, removing the goat pen, removing the public toilet, and uh, after many arguments with the former government, we uh, started with the uh, rebuilding of the Abraham Avinu Synagogue under go governmental auspices. And uh, as one sees now, it's nearly completed. The significance of building the Abraham Avinu Synagogue here near the Arab market in Hebron is uh, the significance of the whole Jewish people. There were many famous communities all over the world where Jews lived once. In Odessa, Saloniki, Frankfurt, Lvov, Lidice, all over the world. Nearly every country in the world had a period of Jewish settlement. Now there is no significance in going back to a former Jewish community which had its hundreds of thousands of Jews, such as Odessa or Saloniki, and rebuilding there a synagogue or re-establishing there a Jewish community, because then it really doesn't mean anything. Those places had their history of Jewish settlement and what happened in the end of the Jewish settlement was a tragedy. And that's it. The settlements were finished. But here in Hebron, we came back to renew. Only in Israel can one have the law that what was once will be again. That where the Jewish nation once was, there it will come back and there it will start again. And the synagogue that is being now rebuilt is an example of the re-establishment and the renewal of the Jewish people in its own land. And here we can make good that what went wrong. One can't erase concentration camps or Inquisition or Stalin, but here in Israel one can rebuild what we once thought was forever impossible to rebuild. Here in Hebron we had a Seder for Passover and we also lit Hanukkah candles and as all Jews one has a very collective memory so one ring thinks about how for 2000 years we've been rolling around the world as a nation from one country to another from Spain to Europe to Russia to North Africa and all of a sudden after 2000 years here we are back in the beginning again lighting candles in Hebron making Passover Seder in Hebron, as Judah Maccabee did before us, rebuilding synagogues, re-establishing a new community. Who would ever have believed that it could be? It's written, Chadesh Yameinu Kekedin. We turn our days as of old. And that's what's happening now. Our days are being returned as of old. They're being returned in a very prosaic way. If one looks around and sees the market here, or the streets in Hebron. So everything seems so everyday and so prosaic, but a person with an inner vision realizes that something very great is going on here. Something very magnificent, that we have managed to come back, that we have succeeded in coming back, that we are coming back, and that we're renewing 
communities, synagogues, renewing the Jewish history, starting Jewish history again from the beginning. And if God only gives his blessing, then we will be successful in everything now that we have started out to do. We've come back to Hebron, the Jewish city that is mainly inhabited by Arabs, and uh, we are finding a way of mutual living. There is a basic confrontation here about the sovereignty over the land of Israel. But I think that once the Jews themselves realize their strong eternal tie to the land of Israel, then eventually the Arabs also will reconcile themselves to the fact of Jewish sovereignty over all of Israel. Many people have asked, how can you live here if uh, the inhabitants here don't like you. So I always answer in return that I don't think that wherever we were, anywhere in the world, we were particularly liked. And the basic question here in Israel is that uh, we are no longer uh, guests in a host country where we are dependent on the mood of the leader. That if the leader uh, likes the Jews, then they can live well, and if he doesn't like the Jews, then they had to better watch out. Here in Israel, we have our own government and our own army, and it won't be again like it was, let's say, in the time of the Inquisition, when the Jews were considered uh, heathen, or in the time of Germany, when Hitler considered the Jews a subhuman, or in the time in Russia, when Stalin considered the Jews too intellectual, or even in present day time, the way the situation now is in Ethiopia, or in Syria, or in Russia. Here, we are in our own sovereign land, and uh, we will find a mutual way of life together with the local inhabitants. And one of the points that I would like to stress here, many times people ask me if we don't uh, try to encourage friendships between the children, or uh, try to encourage strong friendships between the families. I say that uh, one of the great curses of uh, Jews at this time is assimilation. And I think assimilation starts with too close relationships between children or between families. Our basic relationship here with the local Arabs is a correct relationship. We are very careful not to uh, have debts. We are careful to be correct in our day-to-day -day attitude with them. And I think the facts speak for themselves. Jews now have been living in Hebron for 13 years. In those 13 years, not one Arab bus has been bombed, not one bomb has gone off in a market, not one Arab stabbed, not one shot robbed. And I think that background of 13 years speaks for itself about our intentions, that we want to leave peacefully and uh, but the fact that has to be understood by all is the fact of Jewish sovereignty over Israel and in Hebron.
What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Those of us who live in Hebron now have this very strong feeling of how Hebron is the beginning. King Solomon said that what was is that what will be. And we know in Hebron that uh, Abraham, when he lived in Israel, the first place he lived was in Hebron. And after Abraham there was Isaac and Jacob and the 12 tribes. King David ruled in Hebron first before he went to Jerusalem. So somehow Hebron has a tradition of being a first. And we have this feeling in our generation that it also will be a first. In some way Hebron is the key to the rest of Israel. And the whole idea of Israel, the rest of Israel, is that we're being renewed again as a nation. And the nation, somehow it's like a tree. A tree starts beginning, starts growing from the earth. It can't start growing from the middle. And uh, Hebron also is the sign that we've come back and that we have to start growing again. And to start growing, one needs first the attachment to the land, that will start growing from the land. And in Hebron, as in the other parts of Judah and Samaria, which we received miraculously after the Six Day War, we are beginning again the beginning of the growing of the Jewish nation. And we are starting the growing of the Jewish nation and the self-realization of the Jewish nation by the tie to the land. And by establishing, by establishing ourselves to the land and making it Nach Luyot and uh, becoming again part of the scenery of the land of Israel, in that way, we're starting the beginning of the nation that is again going to establish itself.
שלי. שקט מאחורה. When the children take a hike, they come home and they say, "I went on Joshua's route route, and then afterwards we went on Caleb's route, and we came back by the road that Abraham went on. There is no lack of self identification. There's a very strong identification with the past, and uh, there's an absence of the many years that are between. The history of the Jewish nation in its own land and the Jewish nation in the return to the land it's as if all that time didn't really pass and we are raising now children who have a firm feeling of attachment to the country where they live and also there's an end to this very abnormal atmosphere when we were always dependent upon the good moods of the local governors or the local policemen that where if we wanted protection or if we wanted fairness then we would either have to bribe or to uh, compliment or to do all sorts of tricks in order that uh, the people who so-called protected us uh, should like us here we're living in a country where our own soldiers protect us And uh, we don't have to worry about bribes. For our Jewish soldiers, the lives of our children are as dear to them as their own children. And here, if there's anyone who wants to do an account with the Jews, then the Jews can protect themselves. It's something very different for children when they see that if something happens, if there's a terrorist uh, attack, or if uh, there's a threat from an outside country that the Jew himself in his sovereign position is the one who stands up and defends himself and one doesn't have to run from place to place to find someone to protect us that here anyone who rises against the Jew or decides that there's a good reason to do away with the Jew he has someone to reckon with and uh, the people he has to reckon with is the Jewish people themselves And not protectors of course uh, the Jews argue a lot amongst themselves but I think we do that everywhere It doesn't matter where we are we have a tendency to argue amongst ourselves but here we're masters of our own faith and one can walk upright and one can be not afraid because when one is master of one's own faith that's something normal however the past history in the diaspora it, it left its trace and we're still not used to living as a nation in our own land we still have a lot of the mentality that uh, we had with us when we lived in the diaspora and we're learning gradually to be a nation in our own right and to learn how to live by our own protection by our own ways and means of producing, of, uh, of defending, and uh, it takes a while to be, to be a nation in, in one's own right. We're still so used to living outside of Israel that we are more or less what I would say a nation in its diapers. But that's something that time will cure. And eventually we'll learn again and we'll get out of diapers and we'll learn again to be a nation in our own right.